In this video, I thought I'd share with you the five apps that I use every day to protect my data from snoopers and to protect my accounts from being hacked. If you're familiar with my videos, you may already be able to guess what apps these are because I've created several videos about them before. And for that reason, I won't be going through the ins and outs of how to install, configure and use them, but instead I'll share with you why I like them and my recommended alternatives. So let's get started. And first up, we have Signal. For me, Signal is still the king or queen of private chat messaging. In terms of features, these days there's very little difference between the likes of Signal, WhatsApp and Telegram. They all offer end-to-end -end encryption, voice and video calling, you can send all kinds of media and they all offer the view once feature. WhatsApp, to be fair, has been making great strides recently by implementing things like end-to-end -end encrypted backups, which, if that's something that's important to you, is something that's worth considering because it's something that Signal doesn't offer. That being said, where Signal always wins out for me is on the information that it collects about you, or rather, the lack of information that it collects. There is no better way to highlight this than viewing the privacy information displayed on the Apple App Store. If we scroll down to privacy information, here's what WhatsApp and Telegram potentially collect about you. As you can see, the list for WhatsApp is almost endless and Telegram doesn't fare much better. And then here's what Signal collects. It's as simple as that. When it comes to privacy, nothing compares to Signal. So as Elon Musk and Ed Snowden both agree, start using Signal. And next up we have Bitwarden. Bitwarden rose to prominence as an alternative to LastPass when LastPass stopped being free. Bitwarden will generate long, complex passwords and store them securely in an encrypted format, ensuring that you only ever need to remember one password, the one you use to access your Bitwarden vault. It works on every platform imaginable, ensuring handy access from all your devices, and it does all of this for absolutely free. But if you did fancy outlaying 10 bucks a year, you'll get two-factor authentication, encrypted file transfers, and a few more useful features. If you're not fussed by using a third-party app for passwords, Safari, Edge, and Chrome all offer their own built-in password managers. But the reason I stick with Bitwarden is because it's open source and it's third party audited, ensuring that it adheres to the strictest rules on privacy and any bugs are quickly identified and patched. If you'd rather not pay the 10 bucks a year for Bitwarden's two-factor authentication add-on, then I recommend Authy. I have done many videos on two-factor authentication, so I won't waste your time repeating myself, except to say that two-factor authentication really is your best protection from having your accounts hacked, so enable it wherever you can. To be honest, if you already use Google or Microsoft Authenticator, then I don't recommend switching to Authy. There really isn't much difference. The only reason I went for Authy is that I like how it has both a desktop and mobile app, which I find much more convenient than hunting around for my phone every time I want to log into one of my accounts. Just be sure that you enable backups and store that backup password safely in your Bitwarden vault. Next up, we have ProtonMail. And where end-to-end -end encrypted messaging apps have become the norm, thanks to WhatsApp and Signal, sadly, the same cannot be said for email, which is crazy given the amount of emails we send every day and the confidential information that we send in them. For a while, Gmail has offered confidential mode, which allows you to add some security options, such as passwords and expiry dates, but it's really pretty limited. An alternative to confidential mode is Virtue, which is a Chrome plugin that sits on top of Gmail and it does a proper job of encrypting your emails. But that being said, it is cumbersome when used across all your devices. And then there's ProtonMail. ProtonMail is great. It can be accessed through a browser and has apps for iOS and Android. It's very easy to set up and start using and offers many of the inbox features you'll be familiar with if you use Gmail. It does a proper job of encrypting your email and any attachments, and it ticks all the boxes in terms of being open source and audited by third parties. What's more, the company behind ProtonMail is based in Switzerland, which is the absolute epicenter for information privacy, so you can be confident that your data is well protected. If I didn't use ProtonMail, I would probably go for Tutanova, which is similarly very good. 
The final app that I'm going to recommend is Brave Browser. The reason I like Brave is that it implements all the privacy features I want in a browser straight out of the box. As soon as you start using Brave, you'll enjoy ad-free browsing, safe in the knowledge that no one is tracking your activity. It's built on the Chromium browser, so supports many of the same plugins you'll find in Chrome. And if you do enable ads, you can earn crypto whilst you browse. So you're actually getting paid for watching those ads. The only setting I would change when installing Brave is to use Secure DNS, which is available on most browsers, including Chrome. Search for DNS in the settings, click on security, and there you'll find the option to enable Secure DNS. And you can use one of the recommended providers. So there are the five privacy apps that I use daily. Visit the website for lots more tips on all your favorite apps. And if you found this video useful, I'd appreciate you giving me a like and hit subscribe for lots more tips like this one. Until next time, thank you very much for watching.